Okay, Today, you'll see in the card none other than Jeff Van Camp. Also, Redbone will be on the card. Shannon. And in the main event today, you'll see the most, re most muscular wrestler in the business, Stormy Granzik. Stormy Granzik. He will be featured today. The superstar himself. Wait till you see him. If you haven't seen him before, stay tuned for the hour. You will not be disappointed when you see Stormy Granzik. And on the outside. Noting Carson being on the outside, he's gesturing that he's combing his hair. Something untraditional in his wrestling style. Easily taking Dillinger down. Dillinger in there with his bleach blonde hair is having a tough time of it. Craig Carson, the Texan, always calling out for his CC fan. Craig Carson. Boat, sometimes known as gets the job done with pleasing effect. The effects of Carson's wrestling usually victory. Nice leg dive there. Carson, the referee for this opening bout, Billy Beach. The wrist of Dillinger. Obviously hurt, possibly not, though. He's playing possum.
$2,000 to the winning team. Six men on one side, six on the other, and they'll be tugging the war for the $2,000. The man on my right, Stormy Granzik, will be in that competition. Friday, June 1st, 8 p.m. Also make a note, tag team action. Bobo Brazil and Jeff Van Camp versus the Hangman and Jerry Valiant. Valiant and Hangman managed by the man that's coming in from Texas, Saul Creechman. That's right, Creechman will have Hangman and Valiant versus Bobo and Van Camp. Also on the card, you're gonna see Stormy Granzik versus Leroy Redbone. No disqualification for the title. This time, no DQ, Granzik versus Redbone. Also on the card, you'll make a note, Mad Max is coming in, Saul's protege, coming in from Miami, Florida, to go against the young Brian McRuff. Also on the card, you're gonna see in action, Black Cat number one, Black Cat number two, in there against Rocky G and Bobby Bold Eagle. Advanced sale tickets available for this card are available at the usual outlet, Athletic Department Sporting Goods Store. Stormy Granzik will be on there defending his heavyweight championship belt in a no disqualification match against Leroy Redbone. The match was signed. Promoter Bob Luce guarantees the excitement, reasoning, no DQ. Granzik versus Redbone. Also on the card, you're going to see Van Camp and Bobo in there in action against two big men, the Hangman and Valiant. Both of them a tough competition. Super card fans, it's going to be all coming your way. Make sure you get out and get your advance sale tickets. Friday, June 1st is the date, and don't go anywhere. We've got a super lineup for you for the rest of the show today, so stay tuned. It isn't just his size and raw power that set him apart. It's his spirit. Kodiak, the biggest bear of all. Kodiak, a real adventure in smokeless tobacco. Its special moist cut and fresh wintergreen flavored tobacco give you a bold, exciting taste. Kodiak, it's a real adventure in smokeless tobacco. Gracie, you kill me, Marsha, and you'll never see her alive again. Boom, bundle, fight! Go! It doesn't square with the facts. It is true, Marshal. And Peter, that was no accident. I want the truth out of you. I'm telling you the truth. Who did this? I did. Do everything you can for it, Doc. Gunsmoke. Weeknights at 10 here on Channel 38. One fall, 10 minute time limit. Managed by Rooster Griffin at 287. The Great Abdullah. His opponent from Bighorn, Wyoming at 231, Bobby Bold Eagle. The Chief in there against the insane one himself, Abdullah the Great, managed by none other than Rooster Griffin. The Chief backs Abdullah up. Abdullah signaling to Van Loon. Abdullah, whom does speak English, I believe, Always trying to use some type of sign language. Trying to put himself in a trance to get over with himself. He's trying to psych himself up. Obviously, he's not yet, for the Chief has taken over. Maybe the Chief should score a victory right here, and maybe he's doing it. One, there we go. No. Bold Eagle. What a feather in his cap. Pardon the pun. If he could defeat the great Abdullah. Bold Eagle, 
showing the aggressiveness necessary for victory. Abdullah hasn't showed much at all yet. Surprising me that Abdullah's coming out so slow. Abdullah usually enters the ring in a sweat, not tonight. He possibly has not worked out prior to stepping into the ring. The purpose of Rooster Griffin, as you see his arm coming through the ropes frequently, I believe the distraction of a referee to give his man the advantage. He better do some more distracting. Bold Eagle doing a great job. Bobby Bold Eagle, who's been admired for many years. important match that he's ever refereed in. And he's been in all of them. And he noted he thought the most important match that he ever refereed was Dick the Bruiser against Nick Bockwinkle. exciting matches Henry's ever refereed and challenging was Dick the Bruiser and Harley Race. Harley Race seven times NWA champion. Insane one taking some advantage now of the situation. <laughs> the insane one who started out slowly now has cautiously taken control of this match. With each, with each opportunity, he sees the moment and taken control and worn down the perception of the Indian. And now the Indian comes back. And Abdullah floors him. The thumb. 80 some pounds on top of poor Bobby Bold Eagle. That's all she wrote. The winner, the great Abdullah. The winner of the match, the great Abdullah. We're here right now, fans, with the next contender who's going into the ring. 
that being none other than Jeff Van Camp. Welcome to the arena tonight, Jeff. Well, thanks, Dave. Well, I want to tell everybody that, hey, uh, you know, El Barrero, he's, he's, good, he's a good guy. I don't want to take him lightly. You know, I don't want to take nobody You lightly. won't be able to take him lightly, my friend. He's a big man that weighs in excess of 250 pounds. I know he's a big man. He's going to be, you know, everybody's hard. You know, nobody's light. Now, you've been trying to go into your matches, start out a little slow, and then work yourself up. Is this still your strategy? Yeah, it is, Dave. It's still my strategy. That's why I like to keep it. You know. I noted in the match before that Abdullah came in a bit slow. He didn't go in. He didn't look with it. He didn't have a sweat yet. Are you prepared for this match already, or do you do it when you get into the ring? Well, Dave, you know, I'm prepared for every match, you know, mentally and physically. But, you know, I get in the ring, you know, it all depends on how he acts, you know. Well, good uh, luck. Let me make the introductions thanks, right Dave. now. Thanks, Dave. This match is a one-fall, 10-minute time limit from San Antonio, Texas at 257 pounds, Wild Barrero. His opponent from Louisville, Kentucky at 283, Jeff Van Camp. No doubt whom the fans appreciate, Jeff Van Camp. What a gentleman. What an honor to interview such a person. He's so tall. And he's powerful. Look at that. Just tosses Barrero back. Van Camp noted he likes to start out slow. He's prepared for every match. Mentally as well as physically. Used to play on the Louisville Cardinal football team. Oh my! Tossing Barrera right to me. Van Camp found out what endurance was all about on the gridiron. He found out all about professional wrestling in the ring. He had professional football contracts offered him. He'd rather be a professional wrestler, noting he enjoys people. He enjoys speaking with people, greeting them, signing autographs. And he felt professional wrestling was his way to go to make money and also enjoy the friendliness of many fans. Camp taking a bit of punishment there by Barrero. A clean elbow smash to the chest. Now Barrero working Jeff over. Camp taking control. His endurance evident. Oh, an elbow smash himself to Barrera, who goes to the outside. While Barrero giving some type of verbal insult to the fans. Turnbuckles. Barrero following with a smash. Barrero's a tough cookie. And with a reversal at Van Camp. He cautiously goes in and picks up Barrero for a full power body slam. Knocking the air out of Barrero. And he's the winner. Jeff Van Camp had enough. And he since that he had to go to town and he put him away for the count of three. Fans, you stay tuned. We're going to be back with more exciting championship wrestling. Stay tuned.
coming your way to the Terre Haute National Guard Armory, Friday, June 1st, 8 p.m. starting time, 12-man tug-of-war, $2,000 to the winning team, and also tag team action in which, Jeff, you're featured with your partner, Bobo Brazil. Right, Bobo's big, he's strong, it's going to be a good match, you know, Hangman's big and strong, and so is Valiant. It's going to be a good match with all my fans out there. Now, you two match up well against Hangman and Valiant. Both of you are the same size, although Hangman is the biggest of all four men in the ring that evening. That's right. Hangman is big. He's 6 feet 11, 340 pounds. He's big. He's strong. It's going to be a tough match. Well, fans, you're going to see Jeff in that match also on the card. No disqualification. Stormy Granzik in there against Redbone. The devastating bone wants the title. He's at no odds to get that title. He's out on his motorcycle. He's training. He's going to be in shape, and he's ready to take the title from Stormy Granzik. No disqualification. Also on that card, you're going to see action with Mad Max coming in from Miami, Florida, managed by Saul Creechman, and he'll be in there against Brian McRuff. Creechman bringing the best talent from the South in, and Mad Max is that against McRuff. Also, you're going to see Black Cat number one, Black Cat number two, in there against Rocky G and Bobby Bull Eagle. That's right, Bull Eagle making his return to Terre Haute. He's definitely excited about that. Advanced sale tickets are available at the Athletic Department Sporting Goods Store, the usual outlet. No checks accepted, only cash. And please don't call. Just go in there and get your tickets. Plenty of great seats still remaining, including front row and second row seats after today's show. Fans also make a note. Coming to Paris, Illinois, Championship Wrestling returns. It's sponsored by the Fraternal Order of Eagles, number 4,000. It's the big 12-man battle royal. It's a super card. It's June 22nd, 8 p.m. starting time. Great card, and I know you're excited to be in Paris, Illinois. I'm really excited. It's going to be a good night, I hope, and I want all the fans to be out there. It's going to be a good time. Now, you've never been in Paris, Illinois. I was there many years ago when I was taking photographs, exciting fans there. Well, that's great, that's super. I'm uh, looking forward to being in Paris, Illinois. Well, fans, we hope all of you, even from Terre Haute, just go over to Paris, Illinois. I, have, I know we have a lot of great fans that come into the Terre Haute National Guard Armory from Paris, Illinois. We're looking to see you in Paris also, and that card on June 1st, Terre Haute's National Guard Armory, $2,000 to the winning team, 12-man tug of war, and have you ever been in such competition? No, I haven't, Dave. It's going to be the first time. 12-man tug-of-war. Now, on your side will be Stormy Granzik, Bobo Brazil, Bobby Bold Eagle. On the other side, Hangman, Valiant, Redbone. The weight may be in their side. Well, it's going to be a tough time. You know, we, we might have a little bit more muscle, but they got the size, and uh, it's going to be a tough match. Now, how I, I wonder how they will divide the money equally among themselves. Hangman, Valiant, Redbone. All very greedy. I don't know how they're going to do it. I guess they're going to have to fight after whoever wins. If they happen to pick up the, the, the check, I guess they're going to have to fight over the money. I think so. Fans, it's going to be a great night coming your way. Terre Haute National Guard Armory right next to North Vigo High School. Advanced sale tickets are available at the Athletic Department Sporting Goods Store. We hope to see all of you out there to see Jeff Van Camp and Bobo Brazil stepping into the ring against the huge hangman and Jerry Valiant managed by Saul Creechman. Also on that card, you're going to see Stormy Granzik versus Redbone. And what a match that will be. No disqualification. Anything goes. Don't go anywhere, fans. We're going to have more news, more guests, and more wrestling on today's show. So Journey to the magic world of Eternia, Monday through Friday, when He-Man battles the forces of Skeletor. <laughs> of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe as they defend the hidden powers of Castle Grayskull. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Don't miss it. Weekdays at 3.30 on Channel 38. Monday on the Beverly Hillbillies. 71, the team of Rooster, Griffin, and Redbone. 
Their opponents at a combined weight of 557, the team of Shannon and El Bracero. Redbone and Rooster Griffin entered the ring early and stirred up nothing but controversy with their verbal insults. Rooster Griffin and Redbone, cheered by many of the fans as they were mocking many of the wrestlers that they have gone against. His opponent from Kankakee, Illinois, at 229 pounds, Max Blue. Well, fans, this is Sam Medica Race. Of course, Paul Christie's with me. You know, Paul, since you've been uh, sitting with me and talking about the matches and imparting all the knowledge you have uh, and, uh, because of your experience and skill, uh, we've gotten a few letters. Uh, some of the people think perhaps that... Uh, you're not correct in your statements. You seem to favor the rough wrestlers. Mr. America, do I think I'm going to just tell the people out there, I respect you. I think you're probably the best announcer in the nation, oh, in the know, world. Okay, the let, me tell you, let me tell you about the wrestlers now. Let me give my unabiased opinion of this match, and then let the people use your own opinion. Okay, Mr. America? All right? Thank you. Thank you. Well, okay, fans. Here we have two very fine wrestlers in there. Uh, Jose Bracero from Mexico and Max Blue from Kankakee, Illinois. They each have a leg lock on one another. They seem to have reached an impasse. And I, uh, uh oh, uh oh, there, oh. Uh, well, Bracero almost had him over, but right now it's Max Blue with a double leg lock. I must admit that's a very clever move on the part of Max Blue. Mr. Menachem, can I make one announcement here? If you've seen, if everybody's seen that, is that El Bracero tried grabbing Max Blue's hair. Now, I'm just making, every once in a while, a little statement, I want the people to be aware, he tried grabbing Max Blue's hair. El Bracero, if he can get away with anything, he'll pull the hair, he'll pull the trunks, he'll do everything that's dishonest. And as everybody knows me, Golden Boy Paul Christie, I am so straight. Mr. Nice Guy, I wrestle by the rules, Mr. Manneker, all right? So let me just, just, just call it the way it is, all right? Well, I, I must say, you, uh, if you could see some of the things that none of the, none of, None of us can see. It's a matter of great perspicuity on your part. Ah, here we have a combination leg lock and a surfboard hold applied by El Bracero, the fine Mexican wrestler. Uh, certainly you can't find four with that hold. Mr. Menica, I have to agree. Now, he's a, he's a good, he's a good wrestler. He's good. But let's pay attention from right now on. Now, at this point in the match, after two, three minutes, now he becomes a little, a little negative, a little sneaky. Now, let's pay attention now. Up to this point, he's been wrestling fair. But let's pay attention. I'm going to point at everything he does against the rules now, Manager, all right? Thank you kindly. Okay, both these wrestlers now on their feet, uh, sparring around, looking for an opening. Mr. Menneker, I don't want to say anything, you know, against the rules or anything, but if you notice that El Brasero looks a little greasy, you know, that's a little trick that some of the people that, you know, test the rules will oil themselves down. It's pretty hard to grab. If you look at him, look how slippery his body looks. Let me point that out to you now, people. Watch El Brasero. He's slippery. Watch how hard it'll be from Max Blue to grab him. Watch. Brasero brings Max Blue to the mat, now has a hammerlock on him. El Bracero completely out wrestling Max Blue at the moment, regardless of the what uh, Paul Christie says. Uh, Mr. Mr. Menor, can I make one statement? Now, everybody's seen it right there. El Bracero grabbed the ropes, grabbed the ropes. Now, I'm not going to scream at how. Let me just point out a couple of things. He grabbed the ropes and he was holding him down by holding the ropes. Is that fair? Is that fair, Mr. Uh, Menor? Right now, it's Max Blue pulling the hair and gouging away at the eyes of El Bracero, uh, getting rougher by the moment. Oh, referee Connie Marga, the Golden Greek, watching the action. I would like to say something about the referee. The Golden Greek, he's probably 
is in your category when it comes to referees. He's a Cadillac of the referees. He's dynamite. He's superb. He's very, very well. See? See how nice that can be, Mr. Medicare? Uh, Max Blue going for the rope. Seeks refuge out there. That means an automatic break. Max Blue did not go for the ropes. He was thrown down and just, oh, he was close to the ropes. He was trying to get up, and all of a sudden, he had to break it up. Now, he did not go for the ropes. Now, both men with their fingers interlocked, locked, and it's a test of strength now. Oh, a kick to the midsection by Max Blue. They're locked together, each man trying to force back the hands and wrists of the other. Max Blue, a powerful man, and uh, has a great deal of leverage, and uh, Bracero could, uh oh Oh, Bracero is getting away, twists around a box somersault. He has completely reversed this on Max Blue, and now Max Blue's in trouble. I don't think that Bracero likes you, Chrissy. Uh, you know what? Let me tell you something, Mr. Monica. I'm sitting here mind my own business, just trying to get along with everybody. I'm a very pleasing type of person. Everybody loves me out here. And he looked at me and gave me a derogatory type of comment, Mr. Manneker. I wish that I was in here right now. I'd slap him in the A nice uh, flip over by Max Blue, and now Max is, seems to be taking over a bit. Bracero, oh, a vicious kick to the thigh. A kick to the thigh. Bracero dropping across that thigh, the thigh that he kicked. Now, Mr. America, how does El Bracero look to you now? Let's explain this. Now, how does he look now, huh? His legs hurt now. Huh? Explain that. Who's the better wrestler now, Mr. America? Another vicious kick to the thigh by Max Blue. He has that leg. Oh, another kick to the thigh. And uh, Bracero could be in a great deal of difficulty here. Two minutes. Two minutes left. Two minutes. In this match. How are you doing now, Bracero? And Max Blue is way out in front now. He's hurt the leg again. A knee to the thigh. Again, a kick to the thigh. And Bracero's got a very sore thigh. Referee Connie Marker admonishing Max Blue. Oh, a good retaliation by Jose Martinez. He's returning kick for kick. Boy, I'm telling you, he's got him going. Oh, a body drop. Man, he's punishing that leg. Drops across it. Now, rears back on that leg once. One minute left. One minute remaining. One minute remaining. And Bracero looking real good. We notice a very quiet goal, goal by Paul Christie here. Mr. Manica, let me tell you something. He's kicking him with the, with the point of his toe. Now that's it. He should be disqualified, Mr. Manica, right there. Watch him. He's kicking with the point of his toe. Disqualify him, referee. There he goes with a Boston crab hold. However, Max flew close to the rope. And uh, 30 seconds, 30 seconds left. Pull, pull him in. Break it up, the referee watching the action. And Max flew fighting hard against it. And uh, there he goes under the ropes. And that's an automatic break. The bell has rung. The match is over. 
We're waiting for the referee's decision. Referee Connie Marker is going to call it a draw. It's a, a draw. Not, I'm gonna explain one thing. If we had another 30 seconds, Max Blue would have beat him to a pump. The match is over, ladies and gentlemen. It winds up as a draw. It appears as if there's gonna be a little more action. Oh! So listen, fans, while the, the action is continuing here, Max Blue making a hasty retreat. We tell you that we'll be back with another match on All-Star Championship Wrestling. The referee assigned, Bill Beat. This match, one fall, 10-minute time limit. Introducing from the Bermuda Triangle at 225 pounds, Sultan the Great. His opponent from Pig Snuffles, Arkansas, at 342 pounds, R.J. Hawk. Well, fans, this time I'm going rinse that again, and Paul, Christie, and I had a, a bit of a misunderstanding, but uh, I apologize to him. And uh, now that our re we've regained our equanimity, uh, we uh, appreciate your very unbiased opinion of what's happening. Right now, it's Zoltan, a man with a, a, a weird face makeup. Why he does that, I don't know. But uh, he's facing J.R. Hogg. Let's see what happens here. Uh, Paul, can you explain the, the reason for the uh, makeup, the face makeup on uh, Zoltan? I sure can, Mr. Mucker. First of all, I accept your apology, but I'm going to tell you the whole reason is that he's a movie star and he's trying to hide and not let the people know who he really is. If anybody watches TV here in movies, you might be able to recognize him. That's why he recently wears it. There's a very attractive, a very sensuous male-type guy. Thank Most you. Most females sitting out there would be very attracted to him, Mr. Manager. Fans, I'd just uh, like to quickly explain the, the reason for our little... Uh, a little heated exchange here between Paul Christie and myself following the previous match. Uh, he made a few gestures at me and uh, I tried to return it, but nevertheless, we're out here together. We want to bring the matches to you. Uh, Zoltan's trying to tackle on J.R. Hogg, but Hogg is too heavy and Zoltan is not running into a stone wall. First of all, Mr. Menica, make one statement. I want to reach out and shake your hand and say what a tremendous person you are, a young announcer, good, doing your job. And then that's when you struck me on the side of the face. You know what? I'm a man. I can accept your apology. Now let's not talk about our situation. Let's look at Zoltan. Let's watch the matches. Let me point out what's right and what's wrong. Because the people respect my opinion, Mr. Menica. Thank you. Uh-oh. Zoltan uh, working on the eyes, ripping his fingers across the eyes of J.R. Hogg. And uh, choking him. The referee, incidentally, is uh, Bill Beach, one of the fine referees we have. And now both men in there. And uh, Zoltan certainly has the advantage now as he chokes J.R. Hogg on that top rope. Oh, a vicious left hand smash to the face. There's one to the shoulder. Another one to the chest. J.R. Hogg, a very tough guy. Oh, a punch right to the forehead. This ball by referee to just dismiss. I like that Mr. Medicare, that hillbilly. He's a farmer. He's hitting him with his fist. Now, that's not fair. We're wrestling. They're not box fighters, Mr. Medicare. Now, Zoltan thrown into that corner. He smashed into that corner. And now J.R. Hogg proving that he's having no difficulty with Zoltan. He throws Zoltan into the rope. Oh, what a backdrop. Wow. He dropped him hard to the mat. He's going to do it again. Oh, wait a minute. Zoltan tried to... Uh-oh. He brought Hogg to the mat. Zoltan reversed it. He brought Hogg to the mat, but he's choking him. The referee breaking it up. There's a knee drop to the throat. Again, the choke hold. <laughs> Z 
Goaltend with a reverse uh, chin lock. It looks like it may be a chokehold, but the referee is right on top of it, watching it. If it becomes, oh, here's Hogg. He's breaking out of that hole. He has the arm. Hogg's all, he's away. Hogg is away. Much to the delight of the fans and to the dismay of Zoltan. There he goes. Zoltan throwing punches. And absolutely no problem for Hogg. He tries to try to headbutt, but uh, it's like running into a stone wall. Now J.R. Hogg taking over. He has the man back in the corner. He crashes him into the turnbuckle. And oh, Zoltan with kicks. Now Zoltan climbing that top rope. But you, oh, he drops across. The referee, I believe, yes, he has. He has disqualified. <laughs> referee Bill Beach has disqualified. Hogg, uh, the correction is Zoltan. Hogg is the winner. He disqualified him from climbing on that top rope. Oh, man. What a body crash to him. The match is over. The winner is J.R. Hogg by virtue of a disqualification. Ladies and gentlemen, we have some messages, some interviews. Then we'll be back with another big match on All-Star Championship Wrestling. So please stay with us. Hey, hold! Introducing CLR, Clear. The industrial strength liquid that instantly dissolves calcium, lime, and rust deposits. Watch, you'd have to throw away a humidifier filter covered with this much scale. But soak it in clear and water, and in just a few minutes, the filter is as good as new. You probably have a coffee pot you can't get clean. Just pour in a little clear, add some water, swish, rinse, and look. The pot is crystal clear again. CLR Clear does the same remarkable job on decanters, vases, all crystal and glassware. In the bathroom, clear instantly dissolves calcium deposits and rust stains from sinks, tubs, toilets, and tile. And nothing removes rust stains from cement and stucco as easily as clear. Clear is great for cleaning coffee makers, steam irons, tea kettles, pots and pans. And it's guaranteed to work as easily for you at home as it does on TV or your money back. To remove calcium, lime, and rust, it's CLR Clear. And now it's available at Osco, Peoples, and Super X Drugs. Fans coming your way Saturday, June 2nd, Market Square Arena, All-Star Championship Wrestling, 8.30 p.m. starting time. $50,000 18-man over-the-top rope battle royal plus an all-star card. Also, fans, make a note, coming your way to the t Indianapolis Northside Tyndall Armory, Saturday, June 16th, 8 p.m., Championship Wrestling returns with a great card. On that card, you're going to see in action Dick the Bruiser and Jeff Van Camp defending their titles against whom we don't know yet. Also on the card, fans, you're going to see Wojo versus Stormy for the title, and Mad Max will be there, managed by Saul Creechman. Also on the card, fans, you're going to see in action Abdullah, Bobby Colton, Redbone, and many other stars. Also make a note, Championship Wrestling goes on tour, and it will be coming to the Columbus National Guard Armory next Wednesday, May 23rd. Bruiser and Van Camp in a title match. That's right, next Wednesday, May 23rd, Columbus National Guard Armory. Doors will open at the Columbus National Guard Armory after 6.30, and there'll be plenty of time to get your seating. The matches will start probably at 8.15, fans, to allow you plenty of time to enter the building. Tickets will be on sale in the Columbus National Guard Army. Ringside 6, General Admission 5. On that card in Columbus, Stormy Granzik will defend his title. Also, Saul Creechman will be bringing in Mad Max, plus All-Stars will be there. Also, make a note, fans, championship wrestling to the Kokomo National Guard Army. Next Saturday night, May 26, 8 p.m., advanced sale tickets for that Kokomo card available at Dick. Dick Sandburn Sporting Goods, 112 Southwest Street. Dick Sandburn Sporting Goods, your specialist in sports. All the stars will be there. Also, Lafayette Expo Center, Thursday, May 7th, 8 p.m. Championship Wrestling returns, and I'll have out in a moment this man, the Patriot, to say a few words. Thursday, June 7th, Lafayette Expo Center. 
It's a special Zenith weekend sale at H.H. Gregg. Buy this electronic tuning Zenith 19-inch color TV at $2.99. This weekend only at H.H. Gregg. On the next Barney Miller, Wojo is investigated for shooting a suspect. Where was you have the right to remain silent. But hires a big-time lawyer. Big day in court tomorrow. Good luck. I'm getting divorced. And there's trouble in nursery school. Wainwright is the most prestigious nursery school in the entire city. Kissinger has a nephew there. Scholarship? Barney Miller, weeknights at 11 on 6, the leader. Than 11 and a half million Americans have hearing handicaps. Many can be helped. For information on hearing and other communication disorders and the help available, call the Greater Indianapolis Speech and Hearing Association or the Sertoma Clubs of Central Indiana, 259-8105. This match, one fall, 10-minute time limit. Introducing from Kansas City at 265 pounds, Handsome Harley Race. And his opponent from Bighorn, Wyoming, at 229 pounds, Chief Bobby Bolivo. Well, ladies and gentlemen, here we have <clears throat> Harley Race and Chief Bolivo. Two very fine wrestlers and Golden Boy Paul Christie. We're going to ask Golden Boy Paul. Uh, give us your uh, rundown, your, your feelings about both these wrestlers. All right, Mr. Mitchell, let me explain to the people. Bobby Bowlegal, I, I think he's a fantastic, beautiful wrestler. Every move's a picture. But now let me also talk about how he raced. See, Mr. Howie Race and me, we have something in common. First of all, on a scale from 1 to 10, we're probably about a 50 or a 100. Now, I ain't going to brag, but that's why I relate to him. We have something in common. Now you watch him. See what he's doing right now? He's warming up his body. See the way his one moves? His one leg is moving, Mr. Medicare. He's warming it up. He's warming up his body as I do. Now, let me also tell you something. Mr. Medicare, he's thinking. Now, he is probably number one wrestler. We're probably tied for number one position in the nation. Howie Race, Paul Christie, we're a team all by ourselves, Mr. Medicare, right? Now, let me get off myself. I don't want to brag about myself. I think self-conceit stinks. Let's talk about Howie in this match. Now, See the way he's maneuvering his head? See how slowly, slowly he's moving his head? Can you catch the action? Everybody watch this. See the way he's grabbing his hands now behind the eagle, Bobby Bull. See the way he's doing it? Watch, he's thinking all the time. Now he's taking him behind the back. He's going to push every move. Look at that. I like the Mr. Manica. Look at that. Now I'll tell you what happened now. See that? Hold it. Now I know what you're going to say. It looks like he might be in all the trouble. You know, he's setting up the Bobby Bull eagle. He's setting him up. Superb wrestling. He's wearing him down, Mr. Manneker. How would you feel, well, Bobby lady, Bowlegal, Would you feel scared now? Ladies and gentlemen, of course, you see, you see what's happening. And, of course, Golden Boy Paul Christie, uh, he seems to like to favor uh, such wrestlers as Race and the, the rough wrestlers. But Golden Boy uh, Paul Christie, being a rough man himself, he favors them. But look at Bold Eagle. He quickly made a quick retaliation. He body slammed race now he's punishing him with a side headlock and he's very well applied as a matter of fact he's getting a, a race of shoulders down close to the mat but race pulls the hair of bold eagle bold eagle bridging up and he's up let's see what happens he brings race to the mat again <laughs> mr manicure let me explain something right now is how he races wearing the chief right down he's wearing him he's beating him down to a pulp you know what's happening he's taking a breather he's wearing him down look at that the Chief is wearing out his energy, draining his body of all that strength, just draining himself. What? Mr. Harley Race, you should call him, Mellicker, like you should call me Mr. Golden Boy Paul Christie. Watch him. Well, I'm let's let's, Harley let's Race. watch this action now and see if uh, Paul Christie is right. Uh, Eagle seems to be getting stronger with this headlock, but uh, Harley Race certainly is a force to be reckoned with. There's no doubt about that. Eagle, of course, is exerting a lot of strength and energy applying that hold. Oh, a body block, a shoulder block into the midsection of Bold Eagle. Now, here's that famous side salto that he uses so effectively. The two count, Eagle kicking away. Race in complete control now. Come on, Harley! Get him, Harley! Harley! There he goes. Oh, he tried a side salto, but it was reversed by Bald Eagle. 
It was reversed. Eagle rushes and takes that side headlock, brings him over. The two count, and uh, Race gets the shoulder up. Oh, come on, hold him now. Man, I'm telling you, fans, that that, uh, that Eagle is staying right with Race. But of course, Race is a powerful man. He's very, very, he's a top man, there's no doubt about it, but I possibly today, uh, wait a minute, he's forcing Eagle back into the ropes. The referee says, break it up. Oh, a headbutt right to the chin of Eagle, and that just has about Eagle, not, has Eagle about knocked out. Another one to the head. And Eagle is uh, staggered, he's just semi-conscious at this point. Tackle by Race. A back shot by Eagle. He drops Eagle across the rope. His throat hit the rope. Eagle is hurt. And look at Holly Race. Oh, a knee drop. A knee drop to the head. A three count. And it's all over. The winner is Holly Race. Ladies and gentlemen, here again we have one of the nation's leading wrestlers, handsome Holly Race. Uh, Holly Race, we just have about a minute, but I would like to say one thing. You always seem to turn uh, a, a defeat into a victory. That's what makes a real champion. He can come from anywhere and pull out a win. I've been able to do that more than any other human being in the world. I am a winner. I am the ultimate man in wrestling today. Whether you damn well like it or not, this is the man in wrestling. And right here was just proof of it all over again. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, you just heard from handsome Holly Race. We have another match coming up immediately following these messages and interviews, so stay tuned. Indy, a place where dreams come true, a place for winners. Now, you can be a winner too, one of 100 winners of this Valvoline Mini Indy car. Register at any Central Indiana Pizza Hut or FAS Auto Works, no purchase necessary. Plus, get a coupon good for $3 off a large Super Supreme Pizza at Pizza Hut when you purchase a case of Valvoline oil for $5.99 after rebate at FAS Auto Works. Enter the Valvoline Mini Indy 100 car giveaway today at participating Pizza Hut restaurants and FAS Auto Works stores. When it comes to Hoosier profiles, the guys at the Speedway say she has the best one. Well, I'm a sister to most everybody. I kind of like that. And, and, and uh, Gary Benhausen said I was the godmother. <laughs> this week on Greg Todd's Hoosier Profile, you'll meet the lady whose face launched a thousand cars. Well, I'm a planning Hoosier. I'm here the month of May every year for 20 years. And... Linda Vaughn on Hoosier Profile, Tuesday at 5 on 6. A bad fire, but no one lost their life. A few bucks for this little plastic device, and everyone walked away from a fire that could have killed. How's that for the world's best and cheapest insurance policy? You can bet your life on smoke detectors. Oh, Gino, bring Danny the paper. Hey, watch it. <laughs> it's no laughing matter, Dino. I want to tell you about a friend of mine. This is little Judy. Judy is one of over 250,000 children who've been helped over the past 60 years by Shriners Hospitals for crippled children at no cost. If you know someone like Judy who needs help, call the Shriners at 1-800-237-5055. Believe me, it's no laughing matter. Patriot, I know you're looking forward to being in Columbus, but more importantly, in that Lafayette Expo Center. That's right. Uh, I've been up to Lafayette before. It's a great place to be. I've passed through it a few times, going to other shots, and I know some people there. Well, we hope to see you there in Lafayette. That's at the Expo Center. Thank you, Patriot. 
and that'll be a supercar at advanced sale tickets for that and Lafayette are available at the Sportsman. Now, allow me to tell you the news. June 2nd, Market Square Arena, All-Star Championship Wrestling, 8.30 p.m. Fans, it's a spectacular $50,000 to the winner of the 18-man Spectacular Battle Royal, plus All-Star matches. You'll see there the Blackjacks, among others. Fans, $50,000 to the winner. The Blackjacks, Crusher Blackwell, many of the stars will be there. Also, fans, remember, wrestling returns Saturday, June 16th, 8 p.m., Northside Tyndall Armory. Championship wrestling returns with a spectacular, that being Dick the Bruiser and Van Camp defending their titles. Also, you're going to see Stormy Grantic against Wojo for the championship. Also, Saul Creechman, the man from Miami, Florida, that's pulled off spectacular after spectacular, is bringing in a superstar, that being Mad Max. And he's the man to match Stormy Granzik for size, Mad Max. Also, fans on that card will be Colt, Redbone, and an assortment of other stars. Also, make a note, Columbus, Indiana, wrestling returns next Wednesday, May 23rd, 8 p.m., and we'll probably start those matches about 8.15. You're going to see Dick the Bruiser and Van Camp there with a title match. Tickets will be on sale after 6.30 p.m. Ringside, 6, general admission 5, and they'll be available right at the door for the spectacular featuring Bruiser and Van Camp, Granzik, Mad Max, and all the stars, and the Columbus National Guard Armory. Also, fans, make a note, coming to Kokomo next Saturday night, May 26, 8 p.m., a spectacular with Brazil, Van Camp, and Stormy, Kokomo National Guard Armory, and advanced sale tickets available in Kokomo at Dick Sanborn Sporting Goods, 112 Southwest Street, Dick Sanborn Sporting Goods Store, also sporting goods available with Dick Sanborn and Muncie and Logansport, your specialist in sports. With no further ado, may I bring out the heavyweight champion of the world, and I know you're excited about coming into that Expo Center, Lafayette, Thursday, June 7th. That's right. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, they have real, nice, real good fans there, and uh, it's going to be a real uh, action-packed evening for the fans. And also, fans coming to Kokomo this Saturday night. Jeff Van Camp, you'll be there. Dick the Bruiser will be there. Assortment of stars. That's right, Dave. I'm really uh, getting excited for the match uh, next Friday night. It's Saturday night. Kokomo National Guard Armory fans. Kokomo National Guard Armory. Advanced sale tickets available at Dick Sanborn Sporting Store. Make sure you go out after today's show or the entire week. Dick Sanborn has plenty of tickets available for the matches at the Kokomo National Guard Armory. Also, make a note, wrestling returning to Columbus. Columbus National Guard Armory. A super card there, fans. And fans, you're going to see this man, Jeff Van Camp, and that's in the Columbus National Guard Armory, and I hear you're glad to be returning. That's right. I really am, Dave. I'm really excited to come to Columbus. I hope all the fans are out there to watch. Fans, that's Columbus National Guard Armory. Kokomo National Guard Armory this coming Saturday, and also Lafayette, Indiana. You're going to have a spectacular Lafayette Expo Center, a new outlet for championship wrestling, and the big card coming into the Northside Tyndall Armory, Indianapolis, Saturday, June 16th, 8 p.m. starting time. Dick the Bruiser and Jeff Van Camp will defend their titles against whom we don't know, and also on that card, the great Wojo will defend, will be in there against Stormy Granzik, whom will defend his title, and also, Creechman will have Mad Max there, and that's in the armories. Now, stay tuned. Every successful company has a central core of hardworking people. Naturally, it's the same here at Physicians Mutual. Questions about your hospitalization policy? Talk to people who've got the answers. From receiving enrollment forms to mailing out your claim checks, our people have one of the most efficient service records in the industry today. And that's why we can serve you one at a time. This is Rhonda. May I help you? Next, the wedding chapel that married her failed to get her a divorce. On June 25th, I went to Mrs. Slavich's house to uh, have her aid in getting this uh, marriage annulled. Just what went wrong? Was the complaint filed? No, sir. Why wasn't it? Because I never received the filing fee. The case of the wedding and divorce chapel on the next People's Court. The People's Court, weekdays at 4.30 on 6. The Leader. From New York City, New York, at 275 pounds, the toast of the East Coast, gentleman Jerry Valiant.
and his partner from Istanbul, Turkey, at 275 pounds, the great Abdullah. Their opponent from Delton, South Carolina, at 272 pounds, Rufus R. Jones. And his partner from Woodland Hills, California, at 255 pounds, the world's most scientific wrestler, Wilbur Snyder. Well, fans, there we go, and I'm sure it was, this will be a great tag team match. There are two great teams in there. The bell has rung, the match is underway, and starting out for the team of Abdullah and Valiant is the great Abdullah. And his opponent, of course, is the very classy Rufus R. Jones. Both men against the ropes. Jones very cleverly handles Abdullah. Here comes gentleman Jerry Valiant. I noticed that Gola boy Paul Christie is studying this match very intently and uh, he's going to come up with some words of wisdom pretty soon I'm sure. Uh, it's very evident I think that Rufus R. Jones is completely befuddling his opponents. Mr. Manicure, let me just wait exactly 30 seconds, and I'm going to voice the whole opinion. I'm going to analyze the whole entire match in exactly 10, 15 seconds. I'm going to analyze it. I'm going to call the winner, and I'm going to tell you exactly how it's going to happen. Because I'll tell you, you take the opponents that are good. Look at Valley. Look at him. Come on. Look at look at this man. Look at him. Muscles bulging. Look at Rufus. No. Say something else. Uh, Rufus R. Jones. Rat, rat, jerk. That's the way I pronounce it. Watch this, Manicure. Oh, it's a piece of wrestling wrestling. Robert, oh, this is not the disco out here. This is wrestling. Try to have like a punch. Oh, it looked like a finger thrust to the throat. Now he clubs uh, Rufus to the back of the neck. Hits him again and again. Now it's a front headlock. A front headlock, a face lock. And uh, fans. I tell you, oh, wait a minute. Here's, oh, man. He throws him into the corner where he's kicked by Abdullah, and he's punishing Jones. He's working him over. Abdullah comes in there. He clubs Rufus R. Jones. Rufus taking a great deal of punishment here. He would like to get over to tag his partner. I don't know if those men are going to let him do it. Mr. Medical, why aren't you talking about Rufus R. Jones right now? Look at him now. He's not too, too good, is he, Medical, huh? Ah! Abdullah makes the tag. In comes gentleman Jerry Valiant, and he takes over. Oh, he, he has tied a rope Mr. Medical. around the neck of Rufus R. Jones. He took that tag team rope off the... Oh, I guess it's one that he had in his trunk. Mr. Medical, let me go back 30 seconds. I'm an English major, and it's not Abdullah. It's Abdullah, Mr. Medical. Well, I, I didn't realize you were well-versed in the uh, Far Eastern, uh, Far Eastern uh, dialect. Oh, there it is again. Again, he is choking Rufus Jones. Rufus Snyder gets in. Oh, he takes over with a punch. He has it right here, punches him again. I like that, Mr. Medicare. Willie Snyder got in there. Two on one. That's Wilbur Snyder's son. Keep him out. One on one, Mr. Snyder. Uh, keep him out. He keeps punishing Rufus Jones with that rope around the neck. He's choking him. 
And every time the referee turns toward him, he hides that rope. The Rufus is definitely in trouble. There's no doubt about that. As the powerful Jerry Vallon works him over. Fans, this is our feature match of the day. And we'll give you the... We hope to bring you all of the match. But should it end early, we'll have a, a standby match or some interviews. If we run out of time while the match is on, that's all we can do is bring as much of it as our television time will allow. Don't forget, Mr. Manager, Wilbur Snyder jumping in there. Look at him. He's got the rope. Boy, right, listen to the fans. As Wilbur gets in there, he uses that rope to good advantage. Now he takes the rope around the great Abdullah and chokes him with it. Meantime, that gives Rufus a chance to recover somewhat. Whoa, a terrific punch. Now, they both work on him. Look at that Rufus Odd Jones now. He's made a good comeback. He gets over and tags Wilbur Snyder. And Wilbur's in there with a punch right to the chin. Another punch. Oh, look at this terrific action here as Wilbur takes over on both Abdullah and Jerry Valiant. <laughs> he has Valiant by the arm into the ropes. There it is. The abdominal stretch. He's winning hold. The great Abdullah gets in there. He breaks it up. Rufus comes in. He punches Jerry Valiant. Mr. Medica, I don't like the way this match is going. The reason, why don't the referee really watch? Look at Wilbur Snyder, Rufus R. Jones. They're, they're breaking every rule in the book. I'm going to tell you right now. Let me voice my opinion to the referee. Let's just squawk him. Do you agree with me, Mr. Medica? I can't agree with you, Golden Boy Paul Christie. Rufus Snyder is a very fine wrestler, a clean wrestler, a beautiful takedown. And, of course, I've got to uh, onto the ropes, which is certainly well, his prerogative. Yeah, just to justify that, now a man, a man's boy, and there's men, other men, his partner kicking him in the head. Justify that to me, Mr. Manager. Well, fans, you're hearing from Golden Boy Paul Christie with his, his feelings about the matches, uh, which I believe are very biased in favor of such men as uh, Jerry Valiant and the great Abdullah. Oh, uh -oh, wait a minute. Let's see what's happening here. That it looked as if he was going to get into the ring. Abdullah's on the mat. Wilbur punishing him with a step over toe hold. And Bill Beach watching the action closely. There's a tag. In comes Rufus Ajo. Oh, man. A kick to the thigh. There's that step over toe hold. Oh, boy. He works on that leg. And I'm telling you, fans, you can't see Paul Christie right here, but he's reacting. I don't like this, Manager. I don't like it. They're tagging falsely. You're quick, too quick tagging, Manager. You're not really holding on to the rope. So we the falsifying of the rules. That hit came around the ring, but uh, as if he was going to come in there. Now... Wilbur Snyder has taken that hold. <laughs> Here comes uh, Rufus R. Jones with that step over to hold. And uh, one thing we must say that Abdullah's got to be pretty tough. He's been caught in this punishing and painful hold, and uh, he still has not given up. He hasn't conceded the fall. He has a lot of intestinal fortitude, and evidently has a great tolerance for pain. What do you think, Paul? Well, I'll just tell you, he's, uh, he's, he's a very tough wrestler. I'm going to tell you right now that he's just biting his time. I'll tell you right now, that I'll count from 30 back down to one, and at that point, he's going to get up and slash them. You know, I, I, I'll guarantee I bet on Bell, and I'm betting on that duel. Class always wins out, Mr. Manager. 
you know, cheating doesn't pay. Does not pay, Mr. Monica. So when you cheat like Rufus Hart Jones or Wilbur Snyder, they'll get paid down. Okay, here's Rufus R. Jones now. Continuing this step over to hold is quite a famous hold. It's been used for many years. It's not exactly a winning hold because wrestlers have been trained to cope with the punishment. However, it weakens a man greatly. And uh, about the only, well, there's been a the number of wrestlers who could apply it with such uh, pressure and so much inflicting of pain that the other man had to give up. One of those wrestlers was uh, now retired Tennessee Tom Renner, who was undefeated for many years. Oh, man, a kick to the midsection. And here comes uh, Wilbur Snyder. <laughs> now it's a reverse step over to hold. Abdullah did get away, but... Uh, Wilbur is up there now with a face lock and Abdullah forcing Wilbur back to the corner where the tag was made by Valiant. Valiant's in there pu punishing Wilbur Snyder, throwing these punches left and right to the body and head. There's a flying there by Jerry Valiant. Now a reverse chin lock. He's now he's got, uh oh, oh he's got it. Snyder! Hi, hi, Chef Snyder! Ha! Look at that! Mr. Manicur, let's see him out wrestle him now, huh? He knows so many holds. Let's see him do the one move to get out of that, huh? Wilbur is in difficulty now. He's got both arms tied up. He cannot get away, evidently, but he's going to try. Now uh, he's brought over to the mat where his shoulders were held down for at least a two count, I believe. And Bill Beach counting. Mr. Medica, your terminology is wrong. It's not, you know, a hard hold. It's an impossible. He'll be beaten exactly 30 seconds. That's the voice of prediction of Paul Christie, Wilbur Sneeder. He's going to get beat right now. Wilbur fighting very hard against the effects of his hold. Valiant continues the punishment, the pressure. Wilbur is fighting hard to keep at least one shoulder up off the mat. He does not want to be pinned. The crowd screaming encouragement to Snyder, and Snyder trying hard to get away. He's battling against the effect of his hold. It's very well applied by... Oh, wait a minute. Watch Wilbur Snyder here. He's fighting out of it. He's fighting away from it. And Wilbur is up. He's up on his knees. The tag is made by Bannett. Then comes... Then comes... Abdullah and so here also comes... Rufus Jones. And look at them going to town here. Rufus going to town. Beating on him. Sending... Abdullah into the row. Oh, a tremendous smash to the midsection. Into the ropes again, and now a backdrop by Wilbur Snyder. He covers him. Jerry Vanian breaks it up, entering the ring illegally. Into the rope. Oh, both men crash together. Vanian on the outside. Watch this now. He sends him into the corner where he gets the great train. And the winner of the great Ted T-Mac, none other than Wilbur Snyder and Rufus John Jones. Uh, beautiful wrestling on their part, notwithstanding the, the uh, thoughts of Paul Christie. The match is over. It's a great tag team match. And certainly the team of Wilbur Snyder and Rufus R. Jones are a force to be reckoned with. Uh, Abdullah is still staggered in there, waiting in the corner. Uh, there's a protest on the part of, of uh, Jerry Vanner. Well, fans, that's all the time we have. Fans, we're coming right, we're coming right back. We're coming right back with an interview following these messages. So stay tuned for the wrap-up. Stay right the with us. The winner. Do you know what makes our state a great place to be?
to grow a great place, to work and to live, and to make our dreams come true. Fix the leader and you are the reason that we do what we do, because we care about special people, because we care about people like you. Fix the leader. hemodialysis machine is a lifesaver for over 60,000 people whose kidneys do not function. It removes toxic substances from their blood. It's an expensive process, but one that gives these patients a second chance at life. To learn more about kidney disease, hemodialysis, and how you can help, contact your American Kidney Fund. 1-800-638-8299. In Maryland, 1-800-492-8361. It's toll free. Bands coming your way June 2nd, Market Square Arena. Spectacular $50,000 18-man battle royal. Also make a note, fans coming to the north side, Tyndall Armory. Saturday, June 16th, 8 p.m. Championship Wrestling returns. Your tickets for June 2nd's Armory card will be honored that evening, June 16th, in the north side, Tyndall Armory. Featured on that card, Dick the Bruiser and Jeff Van Camp will defend their tag team titles. Also, Wojo in there against Stormy. Granzik for the title. And this man, the wild one, the beast, Mad Max will be in there. His manager, Saul Creechman's found this guy out on the beach. He was on Muscle Beach in Florida, and this is what Saul Creechman's brought in to go against any competition in all competition. Also, fans, make a note, coming your way to the Columbus, Indiana National Guard Armory next Wednesday, May 23rd, Bruiser and Van Camp in a title match. Columbus, Indiana, this coming Wednesday night. Granzik will be there. Mad Max will be there with Saul Creechman and many of the other stars. That's this Wednesday, Columbus National Guard Armory. Tickets will be available at the door after 6.30 p.m. Also, fans, make a note, coming your way to the Kokomo National Guard Armory this coming Saturday, May 26, 8 p.m. Brazil, Van Camp, and Stormy will be there. Kokomo Armory advance sale tickets available at Dick Sanburn Sporting Goods, the specialist in sports, 112 Southwest Street. Van sale tickets will be available there all week long. Also, Lafayette Expo Center, Thursday, June 7th, 8 p.m. Championship Wrestling returns there. Advance sale tickets available in Lafayette at the Sportsman. That's right, the Sportsman. Lafayette Expo Center, June 7th. The big card featuring Mad Max is this Wednesday, Columbus National Guard Armory. Then coming your way Saturday night, Kokomo National Guard Armory. Spectacular also June 2nd in Market Square Arena. And on the 16th, the 16th, 8 p.m., Northside Tyndall Armory. Bruiser and Van Camp defending their titles against whom? Maybe this man will be in there. Stormy Granzik against Wojo, June 16th, Northside Tyndall Armory. Fans, we'll see all of you. And make sure you see wrestling next Saturday here on 6. Today at 4.30, the Channel 6 sports team will bring you live coverage of this final day of qualifying from the Speedway. Be the first to know the final 33 for this year's race today, only on 6.